um, that's where I get numbers. So I think we're ready to start. Welcome everyone to Wiseline. We are very happy to have you here today with us. Hi to all the Wiseliners and also welcome to all the people in our network. My name is Ana Costilla and I'm an engineering manager and data person here at Wiseline. For those who haven't heard about Wiseline and Wiseline Academy before, let me do a quick introduction. Wiseline is a software development company and a design services company with operations in the US, Mexico, Vietnam, Thailand, Australia, and Spain. We are a company that started operations six years ago. Currently, we have over 1,000 people with, mo with more than 30 nationalities between our eight offices and our remote work. We hope we help other high growth companies to build better products faster through our experience disciplines, such as technical writing, UX project management, and all the engineering disciplines, for example, mobile, QA, DevOps, and AI. Currently, I am very excited to tell you that we are growing our team in Spain. Our aim is to reach around 40 people in June, and we already have 10 open positions within our discipline. Wiseline is a trusted ally of brands such as National Geographic, Fox News, and the Washington Post. And as a part of all culture, Wiseline empowers our employees and the community to innovate and grow their careers. And this is the reason why Wiseline Academy was created. Wiseline Academy is a platform that offers free educational programs, such as workshops, talks, certifications in today's most high value skills in technology, AI, technical writing, and software development. Stay tuned in our social media to learn about the upcoming events, which we have plenty. Uh, part of our commitment to the community is that we love to host awesome people who enjoy contributing to the industry and their community. Today, we have a very special guest. Fernando Ramirez is an amazing UX designer here with us. Thanks in advance, Fernando, for your time and for being here today and sharing your knowledge with uh, the community. The mic is all yours now. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, first of all, I will uh, be asking some questions. And if you like to participate and answer them, please uh, write in the chat and we will be seeing your answers in, in the background, right? Huh. Yeah, so like Anna said, I'm a UX designer. Also, I'm a coffee lover, as you may see, a martial artist and a cookie biker. So, but we are really concerned about today. It's my experience working as UX designer, right? So about this session, uh, I would like to ask you the following uh, kind of rules in order to uh, have a, 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 a more fluid presentation, right? Please turn off, turn off your microphone to avoid having noise. Um, Raise your hand if you like to say something or write it in the chat. Again, we will be uh, monitoring the, the conversation in order to uh, see what's happening. Let's uh, use some chat for underground communication. Let's say that my voice is not hearing clearly or something is happening with the presentation. Please let us know on, on, the, on the chat. A uh, question we will be sorting in a parking lot. Again, at, uh, if we have several questions, we need to randomize them in order to be able to answer them uh, promptly, right? And please smile. <laughs> this session will be recorded for people who want to see them in further uh, days. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, let's get started with this. What is UX design as a job, right? Uh, as the name say it, use UX stands for user experience, but this is a holistic uh, definition that we are going to be uh, uh, unraveling on this presentation. First, let's go with the introduction. What is your job? Uh, if you like to uh, answer this question in the chat, please. Perhaps we have designers, engineers, people from marketing, I don't know, whichever it is your, your, your job. Uh, if you want to <laughs> let us know, please. So, yeah, we have uh, engineers, designers, journalists, visual designers, of course, graphic designers, recruiters. That's awesome we, because UX designer, uh, UX design, sorry, it's not uh, only for designers itself. 
you can come from different backgrounds, right? So that's where we are about to discover. Uh, this, the second question that, that we need to do is what do you do the most of the time you are working? Perhaps you are sketching, you are editing photos, videos, uh, you are making text, we are, I don't know, the, the, the variety of, uh, of tasks could change from one position to another, right? It is the same thing for, for UX design. So this is kind of funny exercise that I made yesterday uh, to tell my mom, hey, what is my job? What do you believe that it's my job, right? And the first answer was, you can work anywhere. Yeah, I, saw, I see you from the couch, from your desk, uh, from even my house, my mother's house, of course. Uh, the second answer was, uh, you solve problems. <laughs> she don't even know <laughs> which problems, but she knows that I solve problems, right? So you made video calls. The, the, this, she said that she saw me doing a lot of video calls, right? You make visual design. Uh, that was kind of my interpretation of, uh, of her work. But yeah, she said like, you are always uh, composing things, uh, that, selecting colors, icons, whatever. You have worked with different companies. Uh, yeah, again, uh, this job allows you to uh, go from one industry to another, right? Uh, you work with people from different countries. And yeah, that, that's another statement that, that she has an idea because uh, she sees me speaking uh, in different languages than the one that we were uh, uh, raised, right? So that was kind of funny. And I would like to invite you to, to do that exercise whenever you can uh, with your wife, with your husband, with your sons, if you have, right? But let's move on. What are we going to see today? Well, first we are having this intro, then we are going to talk about what is UX, then we are going to analyze the UX in the industry. After this, we are going to visit a day in a UX designer life. Following that, we uh, want to elaborate more about the UX designer profile. What, what skills do they have? What uh, uh, tasks do they perform? And after this, we were going to the testimonials part. I, I, I invited some of my colleagues to give you some words in order to you to see some ideas of, of how UX design is developed. And then we are moving to a question and answer session. Okay, so let's move on. What is UX? Um, I know how to take away this scratch of, of the presentation, but Never mind. What is UX? Hmm. Let's start with this part. Let's say that everyone here make decisions. Uh, uh, what is a decision? Uh, either to buy a coffee or to prepare, the, prepare it uh, at home, right? Uh, to take a job or to take another position. Uh, to work as a visual designer or to work as a, an illustrator. So those decisions are implying a lot of factors between the point that we need to, to analyze and the decision we take, right? So we have on one side of the scale, the negative uh, emotion of our factors. And on the other side, we have the positive factors. What, see, what is this in detail? Well, the negative uh, aspects of a decision are the effort. How much effort are we going to put in order to do something? The time, how much time I'm spending, is it worthy? Is it taking me, is it consuming a lot of my time? The money, the investment that we are making, and the negative emotions, the frustration, the idea of not being able to do what we are intended to do either in a digital or physical product, right? We are going to elaborate more on that. And several others, right? 
And on the other side, we have information, how, how many things we know about the thing that we are about to do. Sorry about that. Uh, product, uh, yeah, if we all interact with things, right? Uh, a pair of, uh, of headphones, a cell phone is a product itself, right? So how we interact with this product, is it easy? The service, uh, is it uh, friendly to me to use that product or service? Is it uh, uh, handle, uh, I can handle that, right? And sometimes service and product are related. And on the other half, we have positive emotions. Uh, how it made me feel, it was easy, I guess. I, did I get a good perception of the thing that I made? And some others. So one of the most important are the cost, the service and the product. There's a correlation in, in those three, right? We are about to see how. But first let's talk about usability. When I say to you usability, the word itself, it's pretty easy to understand, right? It's that it's, I mean, that something is useful, but it's not that easy, right? If you see that picture, on one side, we have a perfectly built uh, work pad. <clears throat> but in reality, we know that people go from across the other, the other side, right? Because they want to work less, they want to walk less. So that's the idea. They, they are not using the perfect pad that we constructed. They are using the wrong, right? So this is usability. So, if you have this, again, this scale of decision and we add usability and we reduce the time and the effort that people need to, to, to invest in, in taking that decision or performing that task, we are helping them to achieve that task. Uh, and again, what happened when usability is deficient? And <laughs> you are about to see things that are very common, very, uh, very day to day. Uh, things right so let's move with the, with the first one uh, how many times did you find a door like this one and let's see what happens over here Funny how it works, right? But it's a small tweak that we need to make, but it can make a lot of difference. It, 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 now it is like, yeah, it's a rubber, but whatever. We are taking this, um, um, these mistakes every day. So next one, this is very famous, right? And very fun also. Well, for us, not for Miss Colombia, right? In this case, uh, the, 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 the host made the, the mistake of, uh, reading the, the, the wrong way, the, the card that he has been provided with. But it wasn't at all his fault, but if you see the number of the winner is on the top right of the card. And we all know as designers that you need to uh, focus your attention on the first thing on the left top side, right? So that's what uh, he did. Uh, and again, this is a simple mistake that caused a lot of, of things, but speaking with things more, more serious, this is, uh, I don't know if you heard about this uh, plane crash, right? And that's a major thing that, that, that is not a joke, that is not something funny. And what happens with this, uh, at first glance, you can see that the previous version of the plane had this uh, uh, dashboard, this analog dashboard, 
where the indicators were pretty visible for the pilots. Then in the second one, the dashboard is now digital and the indicators are not so clear as they were at first glance. So what happened, there was a human mistake interacting with this dashboard and the plane uh, crashed. So that's, that, that's a shame, right? So usability matters because if things that we build or that we design are not usable, they can be shiny, they can be pretty beautifully designed, but they won't serve their purpose, right? So they need to be also usable. So again, if you provide a, a product or a service that is useful and usable, which is not the same thing, because you can have a knife and it's useful, but if it, it doesn't have a handle, it is not usable, right? So we need to provide product and services useful and usable. But how, we, how can we complement this aspect with uh, UX? How about UX? Well, UX takes place over here. Right now, if, you add in, if we are adding usability, we are reducing time and effort. But if we add user experience, we are increasing positive emotions and we are providing the necessary information for people to understand and to perform whichever task we want them to perform. So no one else will forget a good experience. That's a true, but the hardest true is that no one will forget a bad experience. So what we, what we need to do as designers with, 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 with our job we have to reduce pain points and to increase value. How can we do that? Let's go through some examples. We can reduce pain points by, by helping people understanding new products, new software, whatever, with a tutorial, with, with educational uh, materials, right? In this case, when you land to a new website and you see a step-by-step -step tutorial, you feel more onboarded, you feel more engaged with this and you will never feel lost at all, right? Again, this is a, a, just a, a small game, but even though they are providing you information of how the game works, how can you achieve the goal, etc. So you will be more easily uh, engaged with, with this experience. And this is pretty simple, but it's, it can make a lot of difference. Let's say that you made an online payment and then you see only a blank space. You don't know where your money has gone. You don't know if you're having the product that you uh, uh, purchased. I don't know, you, you will have a lot of questions in your mind, but instead you see some logo, some header and this uh, loader thing, you are going to be a little bit more, a little bit more calm in order to say, yeah, okay, something is happening. I don't know, but I know that something is happening, right? Again, this is another example of, of loading and, and what, what it's doing is to provide constant information of the progress. In, so with doing that, the user is no longer waiting for something to happen. It is going to see how many time or how many steps or how many percentage is going to, to take to, to perform whichever task. Uh, and on the other side, we have to increase the perceived value. This is a, a, a practice that we call gamification, right? Which means that you need to provide small rewards in order to engage people with those, those dynamics. And they will feel like winning small uh, goals, small uh, keystones in order to achieve something. But if they see step by step and, and, and if we associate every task with winning a point, a coin, whatever, they will feel like they are gaining something, right? Uh, another way to increase value is a personalization. Uh, one of the best examples of personalization is Spotify, right? With this uh, list totally personalized uh, uh, with your musical taste and the recommendations that they made for you. Uh, and once you enter, you are no longer in an application, in a music, uh, st streaming music application. You are in your uh, musical library, right? 
So another way to increase value is like using hierarchy. In this case, if you can see, we have two ways to fly the same destination, the same day, the same time, but one has some scale and it's cheaper. And the other one has not scales and it's a little bit more, uh, it's costing a little bit more, right? But if we see over here uh, on top, we have a yellow car flashing and drawing our attention. And they are directing us to this option, to the cheaper option, option which perhaps is not like the best or the, or the one that we will choose, but we are proceeding with more value that, that option. This is an excellent example, and I, I'm going to uh, let you enjoy this, this video. Perhaps you may have seen it. If, if it not, please enjoy it. I love it. Sorry. So if you see, instead of being waiting for your plane and spending the Christmas night on an uncomfortable chair, uh, what this brand did was to bonding people to exchanging that, that experience. And now they have a good memory and a good feeling. And whichever they remind that night, that dinner with the strangers having fun, they will remember the brand and we will remember the, the airline, right? So that is pretty much what experience does. So again, <laughs> let's go back with this. If something is useful, usable, but additionally, we are making it enjoyable. We are providing a, a, a very good experience. We are achieving our goal as UX designers. So is it possible to have good usability and poor user experience? Yeah, if we saw on the first picture, the path or the, or the, or the garden is usable. You, you can still go in over there, walking there, but it's it a good experience, not at all. It's possible to have poor usability and good experience. Mm, not, not, so, not that much because people don't use products that they don't uh, that they don't provide value to their life, right? So, oh, sorry for that. So we have now talked about what is UX. Let's talk about UX in the industry. Let me close these windows over there. Okay, so how uh, or when did UX born? It was born pretty much about the 40s with World War I, uh, when people said, okay, usability matters, right? That's a start. They, they don't know why, they don't know how, but they understood that usability matters. Then came the PC revolution over the 80s, 
and they say, but it's not always about disability. We need to provide something else because yes, we have computers, we have systems, we have a lot of machinery functioning, but not all people understand how can be useful to their lives, right? Then in the 90s, in the 90s, sorry, they said, mm, perhaps it's a good idea to call it user experience, right? Because again, we are discovering something. On the 2000s, it came the web revolution and they say like, what is user experience? Isn't it web design? Because we, went, we were about to see a lot of websites coming all over with weird designs in HTML and almost no CSS configuration and whichever, but there, there it was. So now we were in need of people to, you know, to clean up that mess. <laughs> And in 2010, there were graphic designers, visual designers, uh, and UX UI designers, which is like a very common association between UX and UI. And we understand that a UX designer needs to do UI, uh, sorry, a UX designer needs to do UI and a UI designer is doing UX. And this is not necessarily always true. It is, but not always, right? And now in, in this actual times that we are living, companies across the world are saying, okay, we need them. Let's bring it to the game. So now we as UX designers are going to be required a lot more than before in the industry, in whichever industry you, you can name, right? So let's go to the growth in UX uh, as, a, a work field, right? This is like the arithmetical uh, way that it is seen. You can see the, those charts and those articles in uh, nearsolnormalgroup.com. This is like the, the Bible of the UX. So they were seeing the, the growth of the UX like this, right? From the 50s, the, for, the, for the 50s to the, I don't know, in a hundred years, right? So, but this is what is happening actually. The reality is not. There, there have been, uh, there has been a very slow growth in, in the UX field. And now in, in 2020, there has started to, to become a little bit more faster, but it's not quite fast enough. If you see, we have several years in advance to to overcome this 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 uh, graphic, so that we are that we are making this this uh, kind of tools. That that's why we are inviting you to 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 join uh, the, this this design field. So this these are the words of Jacob Nielsen that says it's completely realistic to expect one hundred percent of the population to work on figuring out what we should be designing, and then designing those products. And the remaining 99% of the people can then work on building, selling, and servicing what we have designed. So again, design work, it's sometimes invisible, but it doesn't mean that it's not useful. And it doesn't mean that we are not going to interact with other disciplines and with other uh, industries. And again, uh, we are, as a growing field, uh, companies are making their own names and their own position. And sometimes in one company, you can be a UX associate when in order you are like UX expert, chief master of blah, blah, right? So we have not yet arrived to a convention of how uh, standards uh, between professionals are, are, are made, right? So don't worry about the title, don't worry about uh, master UX, UX visual arm. That's not really important at this point. What is something that you may take in consideration is uh, this chart with the average salary of UX designers. As you may see, you have like four levels 
entry level, early UX design career, mid level senior designer, and senior UX designer, right? Those are like the common ones. If, and if you see, you can jump uh, between them uh, with a considerable amount of money. We have expressed it in, in dollars, in, in pounds, uh, in rupees, and in, in, of course, for Mexico, in pesos, which is like, I don't know, in Mexico, we are kind of uh, expressing those values uh, uh, for month, but the rest of the countries are, are uh, showing the, the, the amounts in a year. So this is for you to make an idea of how the salaries are kind of composed right now. And this is like the average uh, amount between being a graphic designer, it could be graphic designer, illustrator, uh, web designer, if you, if you can call it that way. And then on the other side, we have how much is uh, charging a UX designer, right? So if you see, there's a considerable uh, amount uh, of increase. So again, it's we were talking about decisions, right? And this is only a factor of the decision of transitioning to, to UX. Let's talk about more factors. Let's talk about how is the designer, uh, the UX designer date, right? So UX design, it's not pretty complicated at all, right? You are going to uh, uh, communicate with your teammates. Of course, you, you can be as experienced as you want, but you need to work hand in hand with other designers, right? Uh, you need, again, if you are shaping the experience, you will have to work with someone else that has very special skills uh, to, to UI, right? To do the UI. So you are working hand in hand with, with them. And sometimes we are going to be a team of several designers, let's say two UX designers and two UI designers, right? So you are going to be with multidisciplinary teams. Then uh, users and customers, uh, this is very important. Uh, as user experience stands, you need to concern a lot of your final users. That's why you are going to be uh, running interviews with them, uh, running tests, uh, usability testing, etc. You are going to be all the time in touch. In, in, in my case, whenever I come to an idea, I need to first uh, empathize with that people, create a user persona, which means uh, I imagine a, a, a persona which fits like the, the needs that, that someone in average uh, that will use my product will be. And then I will go and search for people that match that profile and interview them and validate my, my assumptions. That's kind of the approach that you are going to have uh, to, to do when, when you're doing UX, right? The second one is client, client uh, stakeholders. Of course, uh, as UX designer, you are, you are going to be uh, giving your services to several companies and you need to uh, become part of the team that you are working on, uh, right? You need to understand the business. You need to uh, set the expectations clear be between the team in order to design a better solution for them. You are going to be in, in touch with field experts. Uh, this is, I don't know, pretty common uh, here, right? No matter the level of UX designer that you are, no matter how experienced you are, there will be always room for improvement, right? So we, you will be always in touch with more experienced people in order to exchange knowledge and learn from them. And also in several part of your, your, your path, you will be giving the, those, uh, those achievements and you will be sharing that knowledge as well. So visual designers, I kind of mentioned that part uh, previously, but yeah, that, that's the idea. You as, as UX designer, you are concerned about solving the problem, solving uh, the work of, of, of how the problem is going to be uh, solved, right? But a visual designer will help you to uh, 
put that solution in something tangible to, to the final user. Uh, developers, of course, because we are talking about the software industry and you can build anything without developers. So you need to be aware of how they are going to build your product. How can you help them to build better products? And you need to understand how their methodologies work, how the time frames work for them. And you can become uh, very helpful if, if you do that. And project managers. Uh, project managers, if you are not familiar with that uh, terminology, it, there are people that are in charge of the decision of the project, right? They are like seeing the roadmap, uh, handling with budgets, handling with stakeholders, handling with designers, with developers, etc. So they need to take the right decision in time. And we as user experience designer can be very helpful to them to take the right decision at the right time. What, how we are going to do that? With information, with data, uh, it's kind of the same. But yeah, we need to provide those uh, artifacts to them in order to take better decisions. But let's talk about the, the funny part of being a UX designer. Uh, of course, not on these days because we all know, but uh, back in a day, you used to travel uh, to travel to faraway places to understand how the environment of the people or the product that we are going to build is. We are going to be observing user and their context all the time. Again, user becomes our number one focus, right? Collecting stories that, that will help us empathize. Uh, I talked uh, about this previously. You need to understand who are designing for and what are those needs, right? What, what people's, uh, what needs have those, those people? Understanding the business is very important because you can not build blind solutions, right? You need to be sure that, yeah, you are taking the user in consideration, but also you are providing value to the company. And again, uh, building understanding around users. Uh, we as US designers, we understand that user is the number one priority, but not all the people have this in mind. Even not all designers have this in mind. So we need to become ambassadors of that idea and to go over there and talk to people about this, uh, all this uh, user-centered design uh, approach. And again, this is some dynamics that we made to understand how, how people interact with our product we need to understand how they think and feel, how they, what they see, what they say and do, what they hear. So we, with that uh, activity, we are covering all the all the scenario of a, of a person interacting with our product. Of course, we are going to be analyzing data. Data, sorry, we are going to be uh, taking decisions based on data, not with uh, what I what I came up or not with assumptions, we need to validate that information with data, right? And these are, don't be scared with this uh, graph. They are, they look like big and pretty much complicated, but once you understand what you are doing in this case, this is like a simple table that, uh, but in this case, this is helpful to build uh, a complicated, uh, architecture of the information of a web page, let's say, when we are connecting the dots and see how many people it has each value in common. But I don't want to bother you with technicality. We are identifying the right problems to solve. Again, we need to understand what is your product or service and who is your final user and how are we going to connect that, that, uh, those dots, right? And then, as I said to you previously, uh, you will need to work with several designers in order to compose better solutions. Uh, you are going to be able to visualize your solution and to communicate. And, uh, the, the picture that you are seeing, it's very common for us. It's an exercise that it's called the crazy eye, crazy eight, sorry. And it's meant to uh, elaborate a prototype in eight screens during eight minutes. So it helped us to K 
came with ideas and made uh, make a lot of brainstorming and then all designers came with the same idea so if you see it's pretty visual it's pretty funny it's very amazing doing that uh, and of course not always you are going to be building the the final product you are going to be working behind that final product so you are going to work low fidelity documentation uh, workflows etc and of course once you have the solution you can uh, as well be involved in the, in the final solution on the on the high fidelity mockups right and after that you are going to test that sol that solution that's the idea we are we as ux designers work in cycles that we call iterations which means that okay i came with an idea i went through a process to adjust the values and then i need to test it in real life with real users and see how it goes and if i had some feedback to improve that then i will improve that that uh, that product and launch it again right so you will have uh, the opportunity to collaborate with other people in person with it can be designers stakeholders whatever but also remotely <laughs> and nowadays it is the most common way to interact and yeah you are started to think strategically strategically about implementation you are not longer working for delivering some screens and that's it we are uh, starting to see how this product is going to be built how it's going to work where it's going to live and again this is uh, part of the uh, of the strategic uh, thinking we are need to uh, we are in need to provide this information of how a product needs to go from MVP. Uh, MVP stands for minimum value product, which means that we are going to launch first the easiest path in order to deliver something. And then we are going to complement that delivery with uh, upcoming releases, right? That's where, when you see as a software, and you see like it is available a new update, it's because they are upgrading. They, they first launched the MVP and they, uh, they are upgrading uh, partially that, that product. And as I said previously, you are learning, always learning from your colleagues, from the internet, for other uh, fonts, I don't know. And you will be able to share knowledge as well. It's your responsibility, I, I would say that, as a UX designer, if you learn a new methodology, a new tool, whichever you, you learn, to share with your team, right? And you have a lot of conversation. <laughs> That's why my mom said previously that I do a lot of uh, video calls. And yeah, let's not forget that having a team with designers that are, that are going to the same things with you, it's going to allow you to share those experience, those uh, those kind of, of things. And of course, at Wildline, we are a very, very uh, diverse team and we are always uh, looking for ways to connect, even though we are each one at home uh, without going to the office, we are always trying to, to bond, right? So, well, we passed almost that, that, that uh, how is uh, a day-to-day -day UX designer life? But let's talk about more about what is a UX designer profile. You need to be a curious person. You need to be always wondering why and how can I solve this? Uh, how can I improve that? Why is this build a thing? Why don't we build it in a different way, right? So you need to use both sides of your brain. You need to be rational. You need to analyze that. There. You need to uh, read a lot of documentations, uh, etc. But also you need to be creative. You need to be uh, that kind of people that think outside of the box and comes with a disruptive solution. And again, don't 
under complicate things, uh, sorry, over complicate things. This is about solving problems, nothing else. You're, you're now using your skills as designer to solve problems. So the technical skills that you need to have in order to uh, become a UX designer, it's more related to the interaction design, information architecture, implementation. Those are the ones that need to be strong and visual design as well. You need to know a little bit of service design, business strategy, information technologies, human factors, quantitative research, qualitative research, etc. This is at the beginning, right? This, this profile will help you to uh, start uh, developing as UX, UX designer. So, but as you advance, your profile may look something like this. You will need to be more concerned about business strategy, service design, interaction design, of course, quantitative and qualitative research. What is the difference between those two? Well, quantitative, it's the things that can be measured like Again, uh, uh, data, uh, usability testing, something that it's yes or no, one to 10, one to five, whatever, that can be measured well quantitatively. And qualitatively, it's how we are providing emotions, how we are satisfying a customer, etc. It's about the emotions that we are evoking with our product or service. And non-technical skills, that is where the, where the game came to, to play, right? You need to be collaborative. You need to work on communication. You need to be adaptable. You need to have strategic thinking. You need to know about your business. You have to perform a lot of analysis, being able to synthesize several information, several reports in one deliverable. You need to be organized as well. You need to be constantly learning. You need to be able to facilitate talks, workshops, uh, etc. You, you need to have the, the ability to be, uh, to have a bucket seat into, you know, uh, to try to, uh, bring all the team together to, to align the team without being like, ah, I'm the designer, I'm saying this, and this is going to, to be doing as I say. No, you need to uh, convince the people and to prove the people with data, with uh, testing, with a lot of tools that we have that we, we can take a better approach, right? You need to be critical when, when Again, you need to question everything. You need to think twice, whichever you are doing. Lateral thinking, again, you need to use both sides of your brain. <laughs> and as you advance, you will be able to mentor other designers to teach the, the knowledge that you have been uh, grabbing across, the, across your path. You need to write if you like, if it's not uh, that necessary. You need to be able to negotiate to the public speaking and to tell a story, right? And don't worry, th those are like the, the entry level. You are going to be develop them across the, the way. And how can you start doing that, that, that path and learning those kind of skills? Well, we are recommending this, this book, uh, Don't Make Me Think by Steve Crook. It will allow you to see how many times do we design things that overcomplicate people's life and how can we avoid doing that. The design of everyday things, well, the name of itself says that. It tells a little bit more of the story of how things can be designed and can, how can they be managed. Uh, 100 things every designer needs to know about people. Again, we are designing with the user in mind. So we need to understand them. We need to empathize with them. We need to make uh, them our number one priority. And about face, the essential of the interaction design. Again, interaction, it's the core of it, right? Everything, it's like an interaction. That the thing that we are 
uh, doing right now is an interaction. So we need to consider how important it's for the users to have a good interaction with our products. And of course, I would like to recommend you those trainings. Uh, we are launching the uh, UX certificate uh, by Wiseline. You can also go and see what it's uh, Nielsen Norman Group doing. And you can see like specialized information for the University of California, San Diego, right? There, there are a lot of things. And, that, and that's the, the, the cool thing about UX design. There's no only school, there's no one place where you can learn it and you have to have any certificate to perform as a UX designer. You can learn it from a different sort of ways, right? And we're kind of arriving to the last part, which is the testimonials. Uh, for that part, since we are uh, remote, and as I tell you, uh, we have a very big team, but we are also a very busy team. So my colleagues weren't able to, to be present today, uh, but they sent you uh, some testimonial video. So I will play it next. Fer, can you share your audio? Yes. Let me um, change the settings, perhaps. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Can you hear it now? Yes. OK. Yes. My name is Raul Chavez. I'm a senior UX designer here at Wiseline. I'm going to tell you a little bit of my background and what got me into the world of UX. First of all, I started industrial design. And after I graduate, I started working as a business developer, business analyst. This gave me the opportunity to immerse myself into the world of service design. First of all, on the how business and design can work together. And after a while, I started focusing on the touch points, the digital touch points of the users through the journey. That's when I got into the world of, of UX, really focusing on what were the exchanges, what were the negotiations that the user had with a platform, with a digital experience, and that's when I really got myself immersed and really deepened into the world of, of UX. Uh, what I'm hoping for the future of UX is that more organizations really start to focusing on the users. What are the needs of the user? What are the behaviors? What are the real pain points that user have through a user journey, through experience journey, that UX really can focus in on solving those needs, really focusing on solving the needs for these users. And I think that's the, the future of, of the UX world. So thank you and nice to meet you and thank you for the invitation. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Mariana Castellanos, lead visual designer at Wiseline. I've been working with digital products for over seven years now. And the only thing that I can tell you is I just fell in love with this practice. I mean, it's so much bigger than we ever thought. Um, so that's really something that keeps me going definitely. Um, but it always has a new window to explore. So for me, that's really something that sets this discipline apart from the rest in terms that that will allow your career to go towards what you're really feeling curious about and not towards what you should be doing in order to grow. So for us, that we need to feel that we're in constant movement that we're in constant uh, exploration, that's really something that's taken care of uh, when working in, in product design. But the, the main thing for me, it's the impact that we have out there. As product designers, we have a, a like a bigger responsibility that it's uh, to improve people's life through our products, right? How can I improve, how can I make your life better? 
with my product, uh, with our product. So I think uh, for me, there's no bigger sense of achievement and of happiness. Uh, like when you see a person interacting with your product and they're happy and their level of satisfaction is really high and, and you actually see your product out there and you see the impact that that has on people's lives. So yeah, if, if you're feeling like tackling a great challenge, if you're feeling like having a positive impact out there, product design is the way to go. The world needs uh, new, fresh product designers. So if you're feeling curious, just go for it. Just go for it. Uh, you won't regret it. And I hope to see you on the other side. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Pilla, and I am a lead UX designer at Wisely. I have been working at Wisely for two years, but I have more than 10 years of experience in the field, working with different types of projects as well as in different industries, such as entertainment, insurance, education, video games, among others. Now, I'm going to tell you briefly how I became a UX designer. Well, I studied graphic design, and after graduated, I started working as a web designer in a video game company. I was designing and programming mini sites and web games. Later, and due to the growth of the industry, I became UI UX designer, where I was able to explore both sides and gave me the necessary fundamentals to understand the processes. Little by little, I became more specialized in the area of the UX, since I felt attracted to the part of understanding different businesses, problems, and the relationship with the users. And of course, this without leaving aside the UI part that is a very important in the process. Well, that was my journey. So if you're interested in this field, I highly recommend it since there is a lot of opportunity in the market since the ecosystem is constantly growing. As well as there are many areas of specialization, both in UX and UI, or to be a generalist if you're interested in both. Thank you very much. See you. So that was it, as you may see, we are a team that it's composed with different people from different disciplines and different backgrounds as well. And that's one of the things that make us um, a richer team that we can always rely on each other that if I don't know how to do something, then I can go with my teammate and ask him for, for help, right? And the other way around. So yeah, that was pretty much the thing that I wanted to show you today. So now, we are going to move to this question and answer part, if you have any. So on this time, the mic is yours. <laughs> Hi, can we ask on uh, by voice? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. So does UX also apply to things that are not just digital or is it only for more digital products? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the short answer is yes. UX apply for a lot of things. Uh, uh, like I was mentioning previously, uh, when I tend to say services, is perhaps that you need to shape the experience before let's talk about e-commerce, you need to shape the experience before the purchase, right? How the product has arrived, how the packaging was, how the un unboxing for the customer is, how, what happens if the product doesn't arrive on time, how the, uh, the customer is treated at this point, how are we solving that, 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 uh, that kind of experiences? So yeah, it's not always digital, it's not always physical, it can be related to services as well. Thanks. Thank you. So I see some questions on the chat and I'm going to start uh, answer them. Do you think it's necessary to have a certification to work for UX? Hmm. I will highly recommend you to search uh, something that, I don't know, let's say, uh, proves your knowledge, but it's not necessary at all. I can tell you um, from a background of graphic design and I didn't make like any diploma or something like that. And I'm working as a UX designer. So it is a good idea eventually because it will help you to achieve better positions and to you know, have more credentials. And of course, learning more knowledge, but it's not strictly necessary. 
So yeah, the second was, I want to know also if it's necessary, it's not necessary. What recognitions of the Interaction Design Foundation core certificate have in the UX industry? Well, that's a question that can be answered better <laughs> on, the, on that website, but I can tell you that you can start from the beginning. You need to first learn the basis. You, ne you need to understand how design thing work, uh, sorry, design thinking works, how you can perform uh, quick use, uh, user testing, usability testing. You need to learn the basis and then you are moving to uh, product design, uh, business uh, strategy, uh, product uh, management, etc. So you can start from the very, very beginning learning the basis and then they have programs that they are uh, based on those models, you can be complementing your, your, your work path, right? Okay, how do you suggest we can start building a portfolio without experience? That's uh, an interesting question. Uh, you have, I will tell you two options. The second one, uh, sorry, the first one is go and search uh, one thing that it's called uh, UI challenge, it's, it's, that, it's like this, uichallenge.com. I don't re recall very well the, the, the web, uh, but it, it will send you one challenge per day. And, and let's say that they are asking you to, uh, an airplane is delayed and someone made their online reservation. You need to compose uh, an email, uh, not only the, the, the content, right? Also the image. You need to build uh, an email apologizing for the for the delay, and that way you are exercising your 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 UX muscle. And the other day they will they will tell you, hey, imagine a shopping cart of the product you want. So what that worked for me was to imagine that I was that uh, that I going that I was going to build my own uh, coffee shop, right? So when the challenge of the, of the payment method arrived, then I said like, oh, perhaps someone is going to buy me a coffee by an application and then I need to compose this, 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 uh, this feature, right? That is one. And the other one, it's let's use your, just use your imagination. Let's say that you are, uh, I don't know, uh, you need to use, all the day YouTube for whichever reason, and you think that interaction is not the best, then go and redesign those and publish it on Dribble and, and make your, your, your own version of the product that you normally use, improve the products that you normally use, and that will help you to be exercising that muscle and you will be able to uh, showcase that, that exercises. Okay. So uh, 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 I get lost in the, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, okay, the portfolio it's uh, already answered. How does UX approach digital accessibility? Say designing, uh, okay, that's another good question. Yeah, UX uh, has that part of, of um, that covers that, that the accessibility part. It's more related to a user interface designer because he's the one that provides like the color palette, the typography size, etc. But yeah, UX design needs to cover that, and we need to ensure that that part. We uh, we we tend to say that people ignore design that ignores people, right? So we need to be uh, covering those scenarios. See how can we uh, make tools usable for everyone. Why can I define roles in each kind of UXR like UXR? Okay. Hmm. At this moment, we are at Wiseline, we are composed by UX design team and UI design team or visual design team, right? Inside of the UX design team, there's not such a label like researcher or like, uh, you know, but uh, we are each one of us growing and shaping our own work, work path. 
in my case, I want to specialize in uh, education, in, in forming new, new uh, designers and um, product management. So I'm kind of making those kind of decisions and involving in several projects and initiatives that allow me to develop those skills, right? So we don't have labels per se, but we are building each one or only our, our own uh, work path in order to achieve what we want to, to become in the future, right? What is the difference between UX designer and product designer? Mm, there's, a, there's a pretty close overlap over there because a UX designer has a holistic view of a product, you know, related to the service, to the business, to the technical part, to the design part. And product designer itself, it's more concerned about the essence of the product. Um, how can I say it? The product designer uh, says, let's say we need a mobile phone with this dimension, with this uh, 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 kind of screen, whatever. They provide like the technical aspects of the, of the thing that they are going to build. And the UX designer take a step back and says, hey, with who are you going to, uh, to whom are you going to sell that, that cell phone? Okay, let's analyze them first. So, but there are not so many differences because the, the, the tasks and, and, the, and the roles are overlapping very, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, what about UX research? How do you begin with that? Uh -huh. Okay, how can you start with uh, UX research? First of all, again, it's, uh, you need to like um, choose a methodology. You can use design thinking, you can use uh, 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 several other methodologies and you can mix them perhaps with agile, etc. And then you need to, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the, the essential question is what I'm going to build and for who, right? Once you understand that, you are already uh, making UX research because you need to, uh, there are several methodologies. My first mentor told me that we as UX designers need to be like Swiss knife, right? That has a lot of tools and you don't know when are you going to use those tools, but you have always, uh, you have to be always ready to use that, those tools. So the tools itself, are not defining a UX designer. So you need to first understand what are you going to do? What are you going to build? Perhaps a website, an application, uh, I don't know. And then you are going to ask yourself, uh, are we taking in consideration the final user? Yes or no? If the answer is no, it's how can I involve those users in the process? How can I go back and analyze those people and asking questions. And there are a lot of methodologies that you will find. You will find uh, empathy maps, you will find uh, interviews, you will have surveys, whichever. The, 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 the idea is to start thinking about solving the problem with the user in mind. That way you are starting to do research. But if you need to elaborate more on that, you, again, I recommend you to go to nielsennorma.com and type US re, UX research, right? And of course, you can approach with the with the Wiseline Design team, and we can provide you more information on that. Okay, US research. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm a developer. Where can I start design principles for UX? Well, you have an advantage. You know how to build things, how to uh, structure uh, the 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 programming of behind the things, right? So now you need, again, to start, uh, uh, you can begin with design thinking methodology, analyze it, uh, see how it works, see step by step, and try to understand uh, how a design cycle is working, right? Hi, uh, um, I, just, I just noticed a question that says, why does Wiseline have open positions UX in Spain? 
At the moment, we don't, but we're planning to open them within the next few months. So do stay tuned because they they should be coming quite soon. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think it is it is time, and I'm really excited um, if we can start talking about a special surprise that Fernando prepared for you all. Yeah. Uh, just before we, we wrap up, remember this, 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 uh, this quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, right? So that's pretty much about UX design. So the, first of all, thank you everyone for, for your time and for being patient. And I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope uh, I answered your questions. If not, you feel free to drop a line whenever, whenever you want. And the surprise for you is, go Anna, please. Din -din -din -din. <laughs> this is really nice. Fernando and the UX team has cho have chosen these two books for you. And this is a very awesome giveaway that they're, they're having. So you're gonna have 24 hours to complete the challenge. You would need to answer the feedback survey, scan any of these two QR codes, and they're also gonna be sharing with you the posts for social medias and share them with, within your networks. And then send us the screenshots that proves that you have completed the steps one and two to these, um, to the academy at wiseline.com and within you know a few hours that we have all the results after 24 hours we're going to be sharing this on social media to see who are the two fortunate winners of the books that have been shared thank you everybody for coming fernando thanks a lot for your input it was really nice to hear to see all the videos to hear all of the testimonials and your experience and what is the day-to-day -day, uh, job and how it also overlaps with other things. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I'm uh, also stay tuned within our social media because we're coming with more uh, academies for you all. Uh, a few of the upcoming academies uh, that we're gonna be sharing are I Am Remarkable Workshop for all uh, uh, women there, React Hooks for our software developers, an introduction to Kubernetes for anyone who's interested in DevOps, among others. It was yeah. a real pleasure to have everyone here. Yep, and just before closing, uh, for those who were asking to start uh, a work path as designer at Wiseline, first of all, we are going to have open position uh, in, an, in a near, near future. And second one, we are perhaps uh, uh, by the half of the year launching the UX Academy. So stay tuned because you will be able to start learning and developing and perhaps ending working with us. Thank you. Thank you so much to share your experience. Yep. On the contrary, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you. Thanks for your time.